easy way to think of it is like a giant stomach. If you can eat it, the machine can eat it, but it can also eat a lot of stuff that you or I can't eat. Like small pits and seeds and everything are fine. Skins and peelings are fine. Even small bones like chicken bones, fish oh, okay. bones, that's all fine. The is an on-site aerobic digester, which means there's oxygen involved in the process mm -hmm. um, through use of an onboard tank of microorganisms. And the way that it's operating is onboard in the main reactor, there's a shaft going through it, there's arms that are aiding in the rotation process to allow more oxygen into the machine. There are as well as these little black plastic pellets that we call biochips, which provide a lot of surface area for the microorganisms which are in a tank in liquid form. As that rotation is happening, the colony of microorganisms is digesting that food waste that's been added. An average about 75 or 80 percent of most food waste is water to begin with. So that water will get extracted very quickly and the organisms are going to continue to digest and break down the tiny solid particles that are left until everything within the machine has been broken down into a wastewater format that's uh, one millimeter particle or smaller and will drip through and, and can be drained outside of the machine. While the lid of the orca is open, it's not operational, so we'll just sit here like this. But once it's closed, they can turn it back on, and it basically operates 24-7, and it uses around the same amount of power that entire time. That's correct, yeah. yeah. Very low power usage. It just plugs into a standard plug like you'd plug any appliance mm -hmm. into. Since the orca does produce water with solid particles, and how will a city like New York, their sewer systems and the water systems, handle that extra water? And the city of New York actually has gone as far as to hire wastewater consultants to do a study on on-site food digester solutions and the impact they could have on local infrastructure. And this, the results of that study haven't been released yet, but from what I've heard has been that uh, with hundreds of these things placed in the city, it would be a drop in the bucket uh, in the wastewater treatment facility here. Especially in a city like New York, why is it important to be recycling these types of materials? One of out of every six heavy trucks on the road is a garbage truck. Okay. Removing as many of those heavy trucks from the road and, and preventing some of that smog and air quality issues, which is much better for the environment. On a much larger scale, a lot of food waste could be, is digested anaerobically. It's extremely harmful when food waste is rotting in a landfill. It creates a ton of methane gas, depending on, on where you read, somewhere between 20 and 25 times more potent than, uh, than CO2. So it's a very uh, big, real environmental concern. I think a lot of times people hear green technologies and they think more expensive and less effective. But I think you know, our technology, at least, is, is a prime example of a solution that most customers find easier to implement than what they had before. So on average, within 24 hours, food waste is fully digested into an effluent water and go right down the drain. So instead of them trucking this food waste off to a landfill with the rest of their garbage, it's being fully handled on site. <laughs>